I'm just going to take a look at a few fun things about cables. I love cables, I don't do them very often because they don't generally lend themselves to colour work, but there are a few very interesting things to be discovered about cables. So one of the issues that people commonly have with cables is counting them and what row you're on right now. If you lift the edge of the cable, you'll see that little hole area which is caused when we pulled this stitch across. So this was the st a stitch of the row below the cable and this stitch with the attached string at the side of it, that's the cable row. So if in your pattern the cable row was on row 4, you can say, well, that's the stitch attached to that piece of yarn. So that's row 4, that's row 5, that's row 6, and that's row 7. So I must be ready for a row 8. But if you want to count how many rows it was be between these two cables, so from this cable to this one, the easiest thing to do is just to tuck a fine knitting needle into the hole where the cable cross happens, and then feel with your fingers for the next cable cross hole, and tuck the knitting needle in there. Then if you spread this out over the needle, you can count the number of rungs of the ladder that cross the needle. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is quite densely knit, so you have to make sure you don't muddle up with the head of the stitch next door. It's that horizontal rung to the right of the stitch. So this is a 10 row cable repeat. And if we wanted to tell whether it was time for a cable row up here, I can do the same thing right up to the needle. So I'll tuck my needle in here. I should really have a finer needle than this to do this. And then I tuck my needle out right up by the knitting needle and count all over again. One, two, three, spread it out, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's time for a cable row. That's the easy way to count cables. Since this is a cable row, let's do one. And we'll cable it without a cable needle. It makes cabling much faster and more efficient. So I'm going to do a 3 over 3 cable. And you can do this with most fairly easy cables. Big, very complex cables, you'll probably need the cable needle. But start on simple cable crosses and it will save you a lot of time. The thing to remember is that we mustn't stretch the stitches once they're loose. So if I slip my stitches near the tip of the needle, I'm going to knit the, the fourth stitch next. So if I let those three just drop off the needle, and rather than lifting them off by the scruff of the neck, when I could actually put tension on that stitch, you're better off just to boot them off, let them slip off on their own, so we're not putting any tension on them. We want those to flip to the back. And I'm working just at the tapered section of my needle so that I'm not putting any stress on those three. If I shove this knitting needle in here, it's got no choice but to steal it from that first stitch beyond the cable. So we're not going to do that. We're going to make sure those stitches don't, don't change size or shape. They're just going to sit there. Work right up by the tapers. Make sure my working yarn comes in front of those three stitches and pretend I'm playing the game operation. Just hook that stitch through without changing the size or shape or putting any stress on that underneath stitch. Now you're really quite safe. And there are those three stitches sitting at the back waiting for me to come back for them. And I just tuck them on my left hand needle tip cross the cable over. Now I can put a little tension on there if necessary and knit those three stitches. Now 
Now you might have noticed I did an alternative purl there. We'll talk about that in a minute. And we'll cable one more. This time we'll cable these to the front. So I slip my three stitches off without putting any stress on them. I snuggle the stitches, number four, and the side stitch up close together on the taper of the needle. Very gently knit that new stitch through, pushing it up to the full width of the needle. And knit the remaining stitches. And that was a strangely mounted stitch. I'll explain about that later too. Pick up the stitches that I let drop and work them in that new sequence. And those are two cables worked without a cable needle. Much faster, much more efficient and well worth practicing. In the next part of this series we'll look at why cables are often wobbly at the left edge.